Hi, fellow traders. I hope everybody had a great day today. I want to thank you guys who joined me on YouTube this morning, you know, on the live stream. I think we had a pretty good session. Uh, even though it wasn't the best of days, um, I really think, and these are the days I really think that we learn the most. And, you know, I told you guys that this morning. The days where things aren't perfect, um, the market's not doing exactly what we want it to do, those are the days that we learn the most from and we can take the most from. So I hope you guys learned um, a lot from this morning. Um, before I get into the recap um, of everything that happened today, I want to share a quick message with you as usual. Um, this is very, very important. I want you guys to listen, please. Okay, please listen. You know, because when I started learning how to day trade, being a professional educator and knowing, you know, what I, or for that matter, what others needed in the way of education and instruction in trading, I realized that there was this gap. And I've shared this story um, several times. I don't know how many people paid attention to it. But, you know, these trading educators were teaching D, E, and F. You know, and we were left with some good education now, I'm not saying the education was bad, but we had no idea how to apply DENF to the market to make money because they weren't demonstrating it to us. They were just telling us, this is what you do. And then we were looking at stuff that happened after the fact. Um, so I realized that they were missing A, B, and C. You know, I needed A, B, and C. We all need A, B, and C. So we know how to apply, you know, so these are the most fundamental skills that we need to be successful. So why do most trading educators leave out A, B, and C? And what I found out is most likely because they never went through it. You know, they can't connect with us or relate to us in our struggle because they don't know our path. They haven't traveled this road, you know, before. So, you know, what they're teaching, albeit good content, is missing those key skill building components that are critical to us to be able to apply the education that we're receiving. You know, that is critical. You know, for instance, you know, take when we trading educators do a recap video of our trades on YouTube. You know, we do our best to give you all of the information on how we found the stock what strategy we use, what triggered the entry, what triggered the exit, and all of that. Now you take all of this information and and you're like, man, this is easy. And you apply it to your trading, but it doesn't work out well. And then you go back and you watch the video over and over and over again, and it seems so easy. And you can't figure out, why the hell won't it work for me? And you start doubting yourself, and you start doubting everybody in this space. And you just, you lose your confidence, you lose your money. And in most cases, you know, people quit with this bad taste in their mouth for trading. You know, so why do you think you're failing at that? It's because you're missing those key skills, those A, B, and C skills that need, that we need to be able to execute the trading plan in the market, you know, to get those skills, you've got to be with somebody who knows your path, who knows your struggle, who's been there and done that. You know, I've been where you are. And there are others out there that have been where you are, that's been through the struggle. You know, I can listen to them and I can tell they've been there. Those are the guys that I listen to. You know, I've been through the hurricane. I've been through the tsunami. You know, and I'm here every day as an example of what you can do. You know, this is why I share my life with you every day in the community. You know, I don't have to share the things that I do, but I do. You know, so I want to make sure you guys get all of the A, B, and C information every day. You know, you've got to ask questions. You know, I can't just walk over to you, crack your head and pour the information in there. You've got to ask questions. You've got to engage. Okay. Now, 
because all of you will get the A, B, and C information I share with you every day, okay? But some of you are not going to act on it. Some of you are going to say, ah, you know, the hell with that. I got D, E, and F. I'm beyond this. You know, I don't need this. You know, okay, just keep thinking that and just see how far you can go. You know, that's not going to take you where you need to be. So, you know, and that's why I'm sharing this quote with you today. If you want to go somewhere, it's best to find somebody who has already been there, who's already been down that road, who knows that struggle, who can help you get from, you know, point A to point B to point C. You know, that's why I'm doing this roadmap series so I could take you guys through that. You got to have patience. You got to take in that information and you've got to act on it. You know, you have to make the commitment that, hey, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do what it takes to learn it. And, you know, if you if you buckle down and you give it an honest effort before you know it, you're going to be, you're going to amaze yourself at how far you can go in this. This industry, I'm telling you, the amount of money you can make is, is limitless. It's, it's limitless. It's only limited by your creativity and, and your ability to apply what you learn in your skills every day in the market. You no, know, it's there. You know, I'm growing every day i'm growing every day you know the account what i'm sharing with you is i'm demonstrating you what it takes you're seeing me do it live every day you know yeah i've got other accounts and you know those are d e f x y z skills you can get to that you know and once you get to that i share everything with you but i'm not going to to teach you things that you don't need to know right now because you got to get through this part. You know, and I, I know I've said this till I'm blue in the face, but if you can't make $50 a day, how the hell do you think you're going to make $500 a day? It, it's not going to work because to make $500, you are going to have to risk a lot more. And if you're not able to manage risk on small you know, position sizes, it's going to be catastrophic when you start trying to raise your position size and, and you can't manage it. You can't manage the risk. You'll lose money three, four times quicker. So trust me, if you want to go somewhere, find somebody that's already been there and hook up with them. And like I said, it doesn't have to be me. It could be any, there are other people out there that you may connect with even more. You know, you don't know. But make sure you do it. You find somebody that can teach you A, B, and C that shows you every day what to do, what not to do, when to trade, when it's good to trade, when it's not good to trade, when it's best to just walk away and come back after lunch. You know, take your breaks. You know, stop sitting here looking at the market 24-7. You know, there are things, if you start doing the things and you start listening and acting on the information I'm trying to teach you, you're going to be surprised where you go. All right, so let's take a look at today. SQ was the first trade, and I know SQ is SQ. I know this. Um, So... I'm trying to, here's the five minute open range low. I'm looking to get it through. Um, I was waiting because we couldn't lose the 200 here. You can see how we sold off. We said we put in this huge candle and SQ, it, it takes a while for SQ to settle down. Okay. So. I kind of waited a little bit. We had the big sell off. We had the bounce. We had this big sell off candle here. And I felt, you know, once we rejected the VWAP up here and we started selling off, we sold through the 200. 
the opening range low and I was waiting for it to get through red to green. And I kind of hesitated because I started to wait until this closed and then get in on it, which is probably what I should have done in this market. And especially with SQ, I should have, you know, put the, the, the conservative spin on this and wait for all of these to actually get taken out versus anticipating. Um, but I kind of anticipated it because I know um, SQ has the potential to wash out huge. I, mean, I thought we could have washed out all the way down to the 73 level on um, this morning but based on the way that it's traded. But I also know it can chop around. It can fool you. And that's pretty much what this thing did. Um, it chopped around. It fooled me. Uh, got in early. Ended up stopping out. But I managed my risk. I only went in with 200 shares. You know, I could have gone in with 400. I only went in with 200 shares. I took half the size I would, you know, normally take. Or I could have gone in with 300 shares and done 150 shares. But I did, you know, 200. And I would have added 200, which is something new that we I was going to throw in this morning if it happened. Um, but it didn't. And so ended up stopping out. Thankfully, I managed my risk. I didn't hit, um, didn't go over my max loss per trade. And we were in it, you know, later on. Now, you see, it ran all the way up and pulled back and hit this level, bounced, rejected here. And it worked its way down to the level that I was looking for. Most of the stocks that you see me trade eventually will get to the target I had set for it. Now, what happens is stuff that I can't control in the market. I can't control when things get bid up, when things get bought up. I don't know where um, these big guys are that are trying to build positions or where they're going to defend their positions and not let a stock go down any further. I, you just don't know that going into a trade. So you go in and you just have your plan and you just execute it. And you just don't worry about all the rest of this stuff. If it stops you out, you know, move on. And that that's what I did. Um, and so I couldn't put this on the other screen. But... You know, minus 135.42. Um, you know, just below my max loss for the trade, but I managed it. Now, imagine if I had let this go and it ended up being down 300 bucks because I let it go a little bit further. Let's say I let it go to test all of this to see if it's going to um, sell off. You know, if it's going to reject this and come back and I just let it go, let it go. And then I ended up having to stop out over here. You know, I'd have been down huge and then the stock comes down and sells off. What do you think? Not not only would I have been down huge, I'd have hit my max loss on one trade. But what emotion would I have felt when I saw this thing come down, come back down and hit? you know, the, a level here that I was looking at and it's, it's work its way down, get angrier and angrier and then start trading for revenge. You know, it's always a bad thing. So discipline here, stick to your stop. You know, and that's what I did in this case. So the next trade we took was, um, CCL and this was going to be a, uh, trend continuation trade where we were continuing the down the downtrend here. You can see how we bounced off of this. You know, this thing sold off hard going into the open. This originally this was not on my watch list. This put it on my watch list. You know, this got it going and I said I'm not going to do take this for opening range trade cuz it wasn't on my watch list, but I will look at it for a secondary trade. And that's what we did. 
here was the open. We sold off. Um, couldn't break this level again. No, this was the opening range low. This was a pre-market low. Both of these are significant. Um, so we came down, couldn't break it again. We bounced. We made a lower high relative to this bounce. And as we came through VWAP and the nine, I waited for this candle to open. It pushed up a little bit and it sold. Once it broke the low of this, I was in. Now, I know I shorted into the support. After 10, you know, after 10, the five minute opening range, I'm not even concerned with anymore. The only level I was really looking at was the pre market low. You know, so I knew I was close to it, but if it bounced off of this, and we we still made a lower low. I felt we could still, you know, work this trade down. And again, this is a trade where I could have actually added to this. I was in 300 shares. I could have added 300 more um, under the break. But, you know, I didn't. The market just wasn't there. I wasn't that confident in the market. So we ended up taking our first profit here right on target. Uh, right below this. And, you know, I kind of held on for a minute. And I was getting ready to go to lunch. You know, I had to leave. And this is kind of when we ended the the live stream here. Is when I took this off. I just had to go ahead and take this off and leave a little bit on to see if we were going to get to this level. You know, this was my target, 51.27. Um, and I thought we were going to do it. We came down, and damn if it didn't go back and stop me out. And this was kind of a mistake on my part. You know, every time we took out a level, I was lowering my profit stop, lowering my profit stop. I had it at 52. And once we made this dip, I was like, well, I could bring it down to 75. But I didn't realize that 75 was going to be right where the 20 was. And the worst mistake you can do is to put your stop on a um, moving average or a level or whatever. You, you want to place your stop. If you're short, you want to place your buy stop 5 to 10 cents above this level. So really, I should have left it at 52. And I could have changed it once we got through this. But... It came up and it stopped me out. And it wasn't that it was was searching for my 50 shares. And I know sometimes you feel like your broker or whoever, when you put in your stop, it just automatically goes to and seeks it. What happens is a lot of times you may put your stop where most traders will put their stop. And I'm smarter than this. I'm smarter than to put my stop on a level. But, you know, I kind of, you know, I don't know if I was mentally fatigued or just thinking about something else. But I didn't check this and it turned around and nailed me. Um, cost me a little bit of profit here. So that's what you got to, to think about. When you place your stop, if you have to reduce your share size a little bit to place your initial stop above a level, then do that because uh, market makers will see a grouping of orders around a certain point and they may just take it out and just and keep on going. So you want to make sure that, you know, when you put your stop, don't do what I did here. This was, you know, a mental error. Um, but, you know, still, um, $178 on, you know, this trade, not bad, you know, not bad. I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah. It could have been a 200 plus dollar trade, but you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda don't pay you. Um, when I did my reflection, I saw this and, you know, realized what I did. So I made a note 
to, you know, just make sure that you already know to do it, but just make sure you double check it, especially later in the day. All right, so the last trade we took was a breaking news play, and I took you guys through this in chat, you know, you guys that were still there. Uh, we had the breaking news with QCOM and um, Apple, you know, something about their lawsuit or whatever, and we had the big pop. So you never want to chase the initial pop. Okay, never want to chase it. You know, and I almost got long here, but I didn't like the price action. I, I look for what happens, and, and what I do in this strategy, I look for the initial move, the initial reaction. And then I wait for a pullback to half the initial reaction. Well, the problem was, this was still the initial candle, the initial reaction. So technically, you know, and I had to, to remind myself that this was not a pullback from the initial reaction. You need to wait for the next candle to print and, you know, work it from there. And this thing almost baited me in the chase, you know, because I was like, damn, I, you know, this is where I need to be. But, you know, I waited and waited. And when I got a clear confirmation that we were probably going to head up, that's when I got in. Um, we kind of, we hit our first target, which was around, um, the level was like at 58, right around. So I, what I did was I gave myself some cushion. So hit it at 57.90, where I took half off and, you know, took the rest off up here around 58.25. That was my next target. My final target was around 58.60s. That's where the next level was. But it just kind of sold off into the close. And, you know, I wasn't going to hold it after the close. You know, so this really doesn't matter. But uh, once we lost the 20, I just got out. You know, sometimes you get a sell off and then a huge bounce. You know, a huge two or three candles going into the close back up to this level. Um, but, you know, when we got below the 20, that was it. I just locked in whatever was left. And, you know, 143 on this, not bad. You know, it's not a bad trade at all. So, you know, even though we lost on the first trade, um, you know, 132.47 a day, not anything to write home about, but you got to understand what market conditions we're in. You know, we're not in the best of market conditions. Um, I'm trading, you know, these stocks between 20 and, you know, 100 bucks. And if there's no catalyst, then it's hard for them to move. And so they'll move on an initial catalyst. And we did keep some added volume throughout the rest of the day, which kind of helped drive this. So that was the good thing. It just wasn't as good as we wanted it. But... You know, hey, it was today was a test of patience and, you know, believing in, in yourself and just executing the trade, not worrying about anything else. Execute it. See the right or wrong. You move on. Go to the next one. So that was the day. Um, we're just we're slowly creeping on through the week. Um, you know, maybe, you know, one of these days will probably give us a good day. You know, it could be tomorrow, it could be Thursday. You know, hell, we may be surprised in this Friday. Friday's the last day of the month, the last trading day of the month. You know, because Monday is going to be um, April 1st. So, at least I think that's what my, you know, sometimes I can't read a damn calendar either. But, you know, I'm thinking that's what it is. So, you know, Friday may give us a good day. You know, never know. Don't predict, just prepare. And then that's what we're going to be doing. So you guys have a great night, great evening. If you haven't seen the live feed from this morning, um, the recording is right here on YouTube. 
I'll put a link in the description part of this so to make it easy for you to see the find and um you know we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning